Fatima, I am awesome. Thank you. I really want to acknowledge you and thank you for having me here with you today. It's just such a pleasure and a joy to be here. Excellent. I'm so looking forward to our conversation today and how it's going to bring everybody a message of hope. So let's start with telling us a little bit about yourself and what is it that you do? Well, my name is Greg Harnett. I am Toronto born and raised, but my family, most of my family is of Jamaican heritage. So, you know, while I'm a Canadian, I have a huge Jamaican background and I love my Jamaican family. So a little bit about myself. I love to visit the islands. You know, I've been, I traveled the islands, you know, Jamaica and many other islands, but I'm a, I'm a, I love the Jamaican culture. I love the music. I love the food. But I also love, you know, spending time when we can. Unfortunately, we haven't had the opportunity in the last year to do that. But f- spend time with friends and family. I'm someone who is an avid cyclist. This, just this morning, I rode 65 kilometers on my bike. Um, and so that's something that's very important to me. And then for a work, I sell software. So I'm passionate about making a difference for people in the business world. That's just about a little bit about myself and what I do and what I'm up to. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you for sharing yourself with us. It's good to hear um, all the things that you do. And I know you're an avid cyclist and I know you've gone lots of places to cycle because you post your pictures on social media and it looks like fun. Look like it would hurt my butt after a while, though, but, you know. I my, you, my, you know what you talk about being over the wall that's part of it you just got there's a mindset to it you you know that's the thing that takes you out you know you will yeah of course it hurts at times but like I don't let that take me out because I miss so much of the great scenery of the world and of the of the GTA if I was to always be worried about my butt hurting <laughs> We got to have some fun on this show. We got to have some fun. And so, you know, one of the first questions I want to ask you is what does having hope mean to you? Yeah. Having hope to me really means like, listen, you know, there are going to be good days and they're going to be bad days and they're going to be days that are just blase. And having hope to me is, it could be like having faith, having belief, having passion, um, having it all like, and it's not going to be wrapped up in a perfect little box and been like, here you go. It's, it's ready to go. Like having hope to me is just like believing, believing in yourself, believing in others. You know, some people believe in God and you know, that it drives their fuels, whatever drives you forward. You got to have hope and you got to have desire and you got to have a path forward because things are going to throw you off your course and it's like are you going to let you know maybe it's significant maybe it's small but are you going to let that take you out or are you going to be able to be someone who you know is resilient and constantly taking actions to get back up on the horse it, so that's, like what, that. that's what hope means to me is just keep moving forward I you know, unfortunately, and you know this, my father passed away a couple of weeks ago, right? about a month, it's like six, seven, eight weeks ago. And most people would think that I would be like, you know, taken out and out and down and out. And I'm like, you know, he left the world for a reason. And I believe that I'm meant to continue on his legacy and continue driving hope. And I remember getting something from the funeral home. It's a bookmark. And in the bookmark, and so I have one in my car and I have one sitting on a staircase because I don't have a current book that I'm reading, but I need to pick one up. It says, no matter where life takes you, keep moving forward. I like that. that. To me, is like, I can't argue with that. <laughs> I like that. Hope, hope for you means keep moving forward. It gives you that faith. It gives you that belief that there's something better on the other side. So you just have to keep moving and keep moving forward. 
and that, you know, your dad left you that legacy just to just keep having that faith, keep having that hope. That's an amazing thing to hang on to for people, especially during this time, who are losing parents. I mean, it's bad enough during a regular, not mm. inside of a pandemic, but during a pandemic, the circumstances are just even more exacerbated. So it's really glad that you still have that hope and that faith to keep you moving forward during your time of grief. And that's something that's going to be hopeful for a lot of people, because even myself, I just found out that my aunt on my father's side, I wasn't very close to them. She passed away on Wednesday and it just leaves you in a space of, okay, I'm hopeful that she's in a better place. Yes. I'm hopeful that she's in a better place. And those that she left behind and loved and care about her, they're knowing that they can move forward in that hope, in that faith, in that belief that all of our loved ones who've passed on during this time of COVID, not of COVID, mm. because people are still passing away. We have that hope that they're, they've moved on to, a, to glory or something better than what is here they've left behind for them. So that, that's a great message right there when you're talking about what does hope mean to you. And now my next question for you is, what are you doing to promote hope in the world? You know, what I, you know, I'm constantly someone who is like, you know, I was reading a Bible quote this morning and it like talked about, you know, the tongue that you use, like the, you know, I am a believer that you influence people by your words, your actions. And so I, you know, I'm not saying I'm perfect, but my goal in this world is to always have positive comments, always to be mindful, you know, in the world of integrity, it matters to me to actually say things, you know, that are not going to be demeaning to women, not going to be negative or racist or slanderous, you know, to any person on this earth. And so what I'm doing is I'm having interactions with people, but I'm also having, like, if, listen, people have different viewpoints. It doesn't make them wrong. It's just their viewpoint. And so I can listen to people for what I see as their bigness and actually engage with them and try to, you know, try to meet them, try to meet them where they're at. Also interact with children and, you know, inspire, inspire children, inspire adults, you know, not cajool, not like manipulate, but actually get interested in what people are doing around me. For example, my neighbor across the street has two young children. And, you know, first thing in the morning, most days, if I open my door, I will get from one or the there's a girl and a boy, the boy's four and the girl's nine. And the either one of them will be like, Greg, Greg, like opening the door. And I know for me, or for them that they are just excited to have a conversation with me. You know, the young boy will, he knows that I ride and he wants to sometimes ring my doorbell and show me his bike. Now, if I'm rude to him and say, I don't have time for you, you're not important. Like get out of here. He's going to remember that. And so for me, it is always me having to remember. And there might be days where I get triggered, but I have to remember to be, you know, always looking to be on my best behavior, knowing that my parents would not accept of me being negative or rude or disrespectful to people. So for me, it is constantly holding myself to a higher standard, you know, interacting with people and listening to them from a positive, from a bigness standpoint, and just like, engaging with people, whatever they're up to and being like, okay, great. Like what's, you know, and inspiring people like, okay, you want to do that? Let's go do it. Like not telling people, no, that's not possible. Like you can't, you can't do that. You're crazy. No, it's like, let people dream big, have fun. You only got one life. Time, is, is, not awesome. guar time is not guaranteed. No. That is so awesome to be able to interact with people for their bigness. And the way you promoting, way you are promoting hope is just letting people be themselves. 
Mm. And not holding them small, letting them just fill that space with their bigness. And especially when you're interacting with children, because they are curious and they are always engaged. If they're if there's a little ant, then they're going to be engaged with that ant till the fullness to watch it carry a big leaf, carry it, watch, watch it carry it 10 times their weight. And to have that young man just ring your doorbell because he knows he's related to you because of bikes. And for him to be all excited and you know that, you know what, he is just excited and he just wants to share something with me. That is definitely promoting hope in young people because that's sometimes all they want. They just want to be heard and somebody to listen to them and engage. And sometimes as a parent, I know I brush them off. It's like, oh, I don't have time. I don't have time. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, as they get older and it's like, oh, wait a minute you're driving. Oh, wait a minute. You're moving away. Oh, wait a minute. You want to bring back those times, but the time now it's gone. It's Mm. now gone. And then how do we, how do we then make up for that? But you're so right by promoting hope and letting people be inside of their bigness, be you being curiously engaged with them. That's a way of promoting hope, faith, and most of all love. Mm. I can just see that as just you giving them a big old because yeah. you're a big guy. You're not a tiny guy. So when you <laughs> give out your love, it's like I'm giving up my big old heart and you can feel that hug and that love. And that's what I get from you from the very first time I met. We've had conversations about so many things about the world. And I'm always left with, yeah, you know what? He actually heard me mm. and he was curious because he asked me questions. So that is an amazing way to promote hope. And we thank you for that. We need a lot more of that in this world. So my next question to you is um, share your journey, a journey that you've had from hell to hope. You know, I I was thinking about this question, you know, when you were asking about it and I was like, you know, obviously we've met through personal development and, you know, that's how our lives have intertwined. And really for me, what the, you know, the, the, the last five years, you know, four, four or five. So losing both parents and I, and seeing both parents leave their house in the exact same way in an ambulance, you know, was like, and seeing the process of like them having to go to doctor's appointments or hospitals or like, you know, just, you know, just the way like their lives ended. Now they ended for my belief in peace and no pain, but like the struggle and the hope, like when people like, you know, there are times, and I remember this before, like I ha- I would battle my own head, like about like just being like so consumed about only what mattered to me. Oh, I'm not good enough. I, you know, things I couldn't even see. And the hope, you know, the, the battle for me was like seeing your mother pass away of cancer and then literally just seeing your dad pass away. And I would say that they're, while they left the world in the same space, my way of being and dealing with them is completely shifted. And, and I look at things and go, you know what? I don't need my life to slow down because they've passed on. I actually can take everything that they've given me as a set of tools. I might not agree with everything, um, but I would like, if it wasn't for them, I don't exist. And the people around me don't get like, you know, don't get Greg Harnett because they have not, they, they've interacted with my parents and I'm like, okay, I'm taking what they gave me and it's now infused and it might be infused differently, but I'm also sharing with people like, what I believe makes a difference for me. I'm happy. I'm free. I'm light, but I'm also not going to be bought off. Like I, I say this to myself. I'm like, the things that matter in life are the family and the connections and the time you have on this earth. What doesn't matter is, um, the work, like working and getting bought off. Like, Oh, I have, I have like, I have to get something done. I have to like do something for somebody like my boss. Like at the end of the day, what really struck me was like seeing my parents pass. And I'm like, you know what? Those are the most important things. Those those moments when someone calls you and says, you're sorry, sir, your mom has passed. Sorry, your dad has passed. And to me, that was like, wow, 
like everything else in the world of meaning means nothing when you're dealing with grief. And it's like, you know, people just, most times people just want to, you know, yeah, they'll acknowledge it, but they want to go back to the world that it was. And I'm like, you know, my purpose on this earth, I hear it as so much bigger. I hear it as so much more important than just being someone who's here to make a buck for somebody else. Now, listen, I don't have a problem doing that, but the struggle or the, you know, I think what's there for me is what's really important is like looking at your family and your family journey and using that as the, you know, the, the platform Like I knew my parents were going to die at some point and I'm not burdened. I'm not sunken by them passing. I'm free and I'm light, but I'm also like looking at my world as like, let's go. Like there's so much more that like Greg Harnett here is here to offer. It's not time to slow down. It's time to accelerate. That That is such a touching story um, from hell to the hope of that there is more. There's more to life and there's more that you have to offer. And there is so much more. And you know what's amazing about your story is your outlook on it all your view about it all. That's the message that's going to give some mm. somebody else hope that's listening to this interview today. And the other thing that's really special about you is that you're an only child. So it's not like you have another sibling mm. to go through this with. It's like Greg and Greg alone. Yes. Greg and Greg alone has to come to that realization that you know, both his parents aren't here anymore, but I can be light and free and knowing that they've left me what they've left me and I can continue to give back to this world. That is such a beautiful thing that that's like a mic drop. Mm. And so from that, is there one specific lesson that you have learned from that journey? You know, the one thing it's a, a mutual friend that you and I both have said to me one day that my mother would, and I don't remember the exact words, but she said something like, my mother will always be with me. So now I have like two angels, right? And, you know, and they're riding on both, you know, one on the left, one on the right. And I just happened to like go with my mom or my dad do that. So like, you know, or what would they do? And so for me, it's like, you know, it's just, move the path forward is being fueled by the energies of these people that have left the world. They've not left me. They have, they are within me and they continue to be within me and they continue to push me forward. Um, and maybe sometimes they'll tell me, Hey, stop, you know, you need to stop. You need to slow down. You need to watch your words. You need to apologize. You know, that, that is so cool that, you know, we talk about angels, we talk about earthly angels, we talk about heavenly angels. And then sometimes I wonder, do people, they, they say those words, but do they really believe it? But then when somebody passes on and you say, um, okay, I, you know, my mom spoke to me or my dad spoke to me. The first thing that comes to mind, especially if you're West Indian is like, you're talking to dopies. Are you seeing <laughs> But yet, but yet. But yet when we when we are little and we're growing up, you know, it's like, you know, yes, there are angels, there are earthly angels and heavenly angels. But when we say that we hear from a heavenly angels and be like, you talk to the dead, are you mm-hmm. okay? But it's so true. I so believe it that we can feel their spirits with us. Like I can feel my grandmother with me all the time saying Fatima, especially when I wear white. And it's and and I don't put on something proper underneath the white. I hear her say, "Are you going to leave your house in that?" Like literally, because you're thinking of the lessons that they they, yes. they taught you, and yes. you hear it come to cl- loud and clear. Greg, go apologize. So you're not you're talking to their spirits because you know they're not here, but their spirits live on because their words, their memories, their love that they have for you live on, and we recall it. And yes, that is what that is. So to be in that space is such a sweet spot. Yes. It's a sweet spot. That is so cool. That thank you for that lesson learned on that journey for for those who are listening and watching on the YouTube. That was a mic drop. So don't forget to like, subscribe, press the uh 
press the button that turns on the notification because you never know when Greg might be back on and you might want to hear him. I just have uh, to you know, the, one of the funniest ones, Fatima, that, you know, a funny story, and I don't usually share this, but my mother used to say, put the toilet seat down all the time. So you think like every time I go to the bathroom and even in my own house, I go to the bathroom and I'm like putting down the toilet seat and I'm putting down the lid because this lady has infused it into me and I don't want anybody you know, who's going to sit, especially women who are going to sit on that and then find out that the toilet seat's up. And I'm like, my gosh, my mother has had such an impact on me. And I, I, every time I look, I'm like, okay. So if you ever walk, if anybody ever came into any house that I was in or any bathroom that I was in, you would always find the lid of the toilet seat down because that's been something that's been ingrained in my brain. That's a real thing. And because I've told that to my son and my kids too, because there's nothing like in the middle of the night sitting down and hitting the cold water. It's like, that is not a good mm. feeling at all, at all, at all. So, so true. So the last question that I have for you today, Greg, is what advice can you give others to increase their hope? You know what? The advice I would give others is um, talk to people, share what you're up to, uh, you know, get coaching, you know, don't do things by yourself. Like doing things by yourself lives in a siloed world. Read books, like be curious, like be on the journey of like the path forward, like read books. You know, look at inspiring things. Don't look at things that are negative, but look, be on the lookout for, if you're looking at social media, look on the lookout for chats like this. Look for inspiring conversations. Look for books. Look for, you know, people who are posting uplifting messages. Look for people who want to surround themselves with elevated conversation. Look for personal development. Like, always be hungry. Like it isn't like, yeah, things are going to go sideways, but it's like get connected with people, be someone who's hungry to partner with other people in this world. That would be my message is like, it's not a world where you want to be siloed and in, in your head. You actually want to be in the world, taking it on and taking on as many different avenues as you possibly can and being in a, you know, a positive space versus looking at, you know, the negative and trying to the negative will potentially take you out. So that would be my message and my guidance. Awesome. So always looking at the glass is half full, not half empty. Yes. Right. And sharing ourselves and sharing because we've had moments like when last year, when I was talking to you and you sharing about yourself and me sharing about myself and you said, okay, you know, this is what I'm going through with my dad and, and me seeing this, throughout the process of life of people passing. I say, well, you know what? You being the own child should go and get the affairs in order because when that time comes, you won't have time to think about the affairs. Mm -hmm. You won't have time to breathe. You'll be too focused on what you're focusing on, which is your moments with your dad. And inside of sharing that, you know, we're able to contribute to each other so largely. And you're right. People need to start sharing, sharing ourselves, sharing the moments, be on the lookout for positive messages, messages yes. of hope like this one, yes. messages of everything that's on this YouTube channel to bring you that hope to read. Because I remember one of the things that I looked at was um, the secret over mm. and over and over and over. That was my journey and my pathway to personal growth and development was the secret. So find that thing that resonates yes. with you and, and get, let it pour into you. So thank you, Greg, for this amazing time that we spent together. It's always a lot of fun. We're always laughing. We're always joking. We're always exchanging information, thoughts, mic drops. So yeah. it was a pleasure to have you on today. Do you have any final words before I wrap up? Well, Fatima, firstly, you know, I'm really honored that as a friend and, you know, you've been someone who's been someone I've known for a couple of years. And I really want to thank you for inviting me into your space so that I can make a difference for people that I don't even know. 
So I am thankful for that and I'm really touched and moved and you know I feel the love and I give the love back. And yeah, I just the really thing I would just say is like this is just keep this going. This is beautiful. Thank you. So I just want to thank everyone for joining us today for my interview with Greg Harnett. Look out for it. It will be posted around in June, around Father's Day. And I want everyone to have a super fantastic day.